For many of us, the Old Testament has a reputation for being at least a little weird, if not outright disturbing, and certainly very violent. And as I reflect on that, I realize that it is due in large part to the fact that the unhappy and often disturbing task of describing the world apart from the law falls to the Old Testament. We think about that passage from history between the time of the fall from grace and Adam and Eve's departure from the Garden of Eden forward in time to the life of Abraham, during which God forms a covenantal relationship with all of humanity as a time of profound disorder. And the fact that apart from the, apart from the grace of God, humanity becomes like violent animals. And as we survey the world around us, which seems so quick to want to throw, throw divine law aside, we're all nodding our heads in assent and saying, you know what, that really is true. That even departing from the law in a small way makes it extraordinarily difficult to have any hope that you and I will ever live according to who we fully and authentically are. And that is why people of faith throughout all of the millennia have been particularly grateful for that day on which God himself appeared to Moses and said, you know what, you don't have to figure it out on your own anymore. I will write it down for you. And even fast forward to the time of Jesus, there were many faithful people who disputed with Jesus about the nature of the law. They believed with all certainty and in great faith that the perfect day on earth will be the day when every soul on earth lives in accordance with Mosaic law. And Jesus replies to them, do not forget why the law was given. The law was not given as an end in itself. God did not create you to be conformers to the law of Moses. God created you to share in his divine life. And that is who you fully and authentically are. And because that is who you fully and authentically are, that remains your one great hope and the one great fulfillment of your being to live as a saint with him in heaven forever. And Jesus responds to those who say, this guy is throwing the law of Moses aside. And he tells them, I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. And fast forward to the 21st century, how quickly we fall back into the belief that somehow conformance to the law is the end of our lives. And Jesus tells us again, no, it is far greater than that. That while conformance to the law remains an important predecessor, the fullness of your being is realized when you live in union with me. People often look at me with a very puzzled look when I tell them 
that my favorite time of year is the season of Lent. Lent? Lent is awful. But look at it this way. Again, it proceeds from the realization that the law given by God is not a big fat rule book that was given to us so that God would have the occasion to punish us. If it were God's desire to punish a sinner, to punish anyone who is in any kind of moral failure, the entire history of the world would have gone differently. There would have been no reason to give the law. There would have been no reason to send the prophets. And there certainly would have been no reason to send his only begotten son to take on human flesh and to announce the perfect means of salvation to a world that is so clearly desperate to know it. And so the reason why I love Lent is because the church is very clear and very explicit in calling every baptized soul to take an honest inventory of your heart and to ask our Lord, Lord, is there anything that has cast a shadow over my confidence in you? Is there anything about me or about my daily life that remains estranged from you? And to say, Lord, let this time of penance and healing and transformation serve to remove from my heart whatever still separates me from you. So many of us have the tendency to say, well, you know, I think I'll give up chocolate or TV or alcohol. And I would be the first to say that if that is genuinely the one thing in your life that is separating you from Christ, then absolutely let it go. But I would suggest to you that many who think along those lines in preparing for Lent are just giving themselves something relatively easy to point to. Well, look, see, I did something different. When the reality is there is something far deeper that is still waiting to surrender to Jesus. So many of us say, well, you know, I, I know the Ten Commandments and I got nine of them perfect. And Jesus stands waiting, waiting to come to you to lift away that last shred of ignorance or malice or weakness or disordered desire so that your heart might finally become truly free to receive him and be transformed by him to the full. Jesus in today's gospel is not suggesting actually that you mutilate yourself. He's not saying literally pluck out your eye and throw it away. He's not saying cut off your hand and throw it away. What he is saying is that you very may well be desperately clinging to something that is unimaginable that you would ever let it go. And being the good shepherd and being the divine physician is begging you, let that go. And maybe not for the rest of your life. Maybe the rest of your life is a little bit too much to think about right now. And so, in his great mercy, he says, okay, 
just give me 40 days. Just give me 40 days so that you might finally taste of the fullness of the freedom that I offer you. And we pray again, Lord, let this season of Lent be a time not only of penance, but a time of healing, a time of new wholeness, a time of new liberation, a time of really experiencing the new life that you promised me. And let me emerge during that grand celebration of Holy Week a clearer and more confident witness to the power of your healing and the power of your love in the lives of everyone that I will meet.